Can bioidentical menopause hormones like estradiol and micronized progesterone prevent heart disease in women? The Women's Health Initiative showed that Premarin, or conjugated equine estrogens, along with a progestin called medroxyprogesterone, increased heart disease risk in women. But how strong is the evidence from the WHI? I'm Steve Goldring from SimpleHormones.com. I help patients and healthcare providers with easy to understand patient education resources, especially about hormone optimization. If you know of a patient education tool or resource, a website or a book that you'd like to share, drop a comment in the space below and I'll see if I can get to it. The Women's Health Initiative put the brakes on menopause hormones in a major way back in the early 2000s. If you look closely at the evidence though, it seems that maybe we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Are all menopausal hormone therapy options equal in their risks for heart attacks in women? Is it possible that there are menopause hormone replacement therapy options that don't have the same risks as what we saw in the WHI? Heart attacks kill more women over 50 than any other cause. In fact, cardiovascular disease accounts for nearly 10 times the number of deaths among postmenopausal women that breast cancer does. The Women's Health Initiative was originally conducted to test this hypothesis that hormone replacement therapy could actually prevent heart disease in women. That study was abruptly halted in 2002 because of a 26% increase in invasive breast cancer. That 26% increase in breast cancer sounds frightening, but it also could be a bit misleading. The study authors clearly state that the increased breast cancer rate did not reach statistical significance in the study. That means the increase in breast cancer can't reliably be tied to the taking of hormones. Preliminary results of the WHI also showed that 8,506 women taking conjugated equine estrogens plus medroxyprogesterone had higher rates of cardiovascular events, mostly non-fatal heart attacks. They were higher than the 8,102 women who took placebos. Unlike with breast cancer risk, cardiovascular disease was shown to be statistically significant in an increase, although it's still quite small. WHI researchers concluded estrogen plus progestin does not confer benefit for preventing coronary heart disease among women with a uterus. Well, interestingly, the WHI writing group outlined some limitations of the study by saying this. This trial tested only one drug regimen conjugated equine estrogens plus medroxyprogesterone in postmenopausal women with an intact uterus. The results do not necessarily apply to lower dosages of these drugs to other formulations of oral estrogens and progestins or to estrogens and progestins administered through the transdermal route. It remains possible that transdermal estradiol with progesterone, which more closely mimics the normal physiology and metabolism of endogenous sex hormones, may provide a different risk-benefit profile. Hmm. These study limitations have basically been ignored by the FDA and other organizations who went on to completely apply the findings of the WHI to any and all estrogen-progestin combinations. When it comes to cardiac risk, age matters. Looking more closely at the WHI, researchers have questioned the cardiovascular risk from hormone replacement therapy. In 2007, the study's lead investigators backtracked on their original statement, HRT increases heart risks. They noted that women given HRT early in menopause did much better than women who took HRT 10 or more years after going into menopause. The average age of WHI participants was 63. That's 12 years past menopause. Other researchers digging deep into WHI data noticed that increases in cardiac events in the WHI were seen only among women who were 20 or more years past menopause. Although the title of the Women's Health Initiative was Risks and Benefits of Estrogen Plus Progestin in Healthy Postmenopausal Women, the data within the study seemed to contradict that presupposition that the women were healthy. In addition to being 63 years old at the beginning of the study, a full 69.6% .6 of the participants were overweight or obese, with a mean BMI of 28.5. 35% had been treated for hypertension, 50% were either past or current smokers, and 12% had been treated for dyslipidemia or cholesterol problems. 
These are all major risk factors for heart disease in women. Prior heart attack was reported in 1.6% of women randomized to hormone replacement before the study started, but the results of the study reported cardiovascular disease in only 0.37% of those same patients. So were the women included in the Women's Health Initiative really healthy to begin with? The conclusion is basically cemented in our minds. Hormone replacement therapy increases the risks for cardiovascular disease. That's according to the Women's Health Initiative. But hold on just a minute. Maybe hormone replacement or HRT only increases the risk in older women 10 or years past menopause. Maybe these findings only apply to women already at risk of heart disease. Maybe the findings only apply to conjugated estrogens and medroxyprogesterone, as the study report explicitly states. Maybe there are other estrogen-progestin combinations that are better at reducing cardiovascular risk, like estradiol and progesterone. After the WHI was stopped, the timing hypothesis about HRT and cardiovascular risk came to light. The timing hypothesis is the idea that women given HRT early in menopause were protected from cardiovascular disease, while women 10 or more years past menopause may have gone too long without hormones and they would have no benefits. There are three major large-scale studies that tested this hypothesis with a variety of estrogens and progestins. The first is the Danish Osteoporosis Prevention Study, or DOPS. It was designed to test the effectiveness of bioidentical estradiol. That's exactly the same chemical structure as the estradiol produced by the ovaries. That estradiol was given along with a progestin called norethestrone for preventing osteoporosis in recently postmenopausal women. Their average age was only 50, close to menopause. A smaller arm of the open label study looked at cardiovascular events in 1,006 of those women. The results were that initiation of hormone replacement therapy in women early after menopause significantly reduces the risks of combined endpoint of mortality, myocardial infarction, or heart failure. Importantly, early initiation and prolonged hormone replacement therapy did not result in an increased risk of breast cancer or stroke. The early versus late postmenopausal treatment with estradiol trial, or ELITE, was specifically designed to test the timing hypothesis with bioidentical oral estradiol and vaginal progesterone in 643 healthy postmenopausal women. Two groups of women, those early in menopause, average age 55, and those 10 years in menopause, average age 63. The results showed the effects of estradiol with or without progesterone on the progression of atherosclerosis, assessed as CIMT, which we'll talk about, differed according to the time of initiation of therapy, with benefit noted when it was initiated in women who were less than six years past menopause, but not when it was initiated in women who were 10 or more years past menopause. By the way, the CIMT, or carotid intima media thickness test, it's a measure used to diagnose the extent of carotid atherosclerotic vascular disease. It measures the thickness of the inner two layers of the carotid artery in your neck, the intima and the media. It kind of tells physicians that there's a thickening when patients don't have any other symptoms. Early detection of CIMT problems might indicate the need for more aggressive management of things like heart disease and stroke risk. The Kronos Early Estrogen Prevention Study, or KEEPS, tested either conjugated estrogens or bioidentical estradiol with bioidentical oral micronized progesterone in 727 healthy postmenopausal women, average age 52 to 53. After four years, neither hormone therapy affected the rate of increase in CIMT. There was a trend for reduced accumulation of coronary artery calcium with the conjugated estrogens. There were no severe adverse effects, including venous thrombosis or major blood clots. Well, these three trials and many others strengthen the evidence for prescribing bioidentical estradiol early in menopause to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. It's possible that guidelines which explicitly cite the Women's Health Initiative as the reason not to prescribe hormone replacement for prevention of cardiovascular disease may not be considering all the evidence, both in the WHI and elsewhere, about benefits of hormone replacement therapy in menopause. The evidence favors protecting women from the very thing that's the most likely problem to get them in the end, that is, heart disease. 
it's possible that bioidentical estradiol and natural micronized progesterone, especially when given early in menopause, may help prevent heart attacks in postmenopausal women. Well, if this video has been helpful at all, click the like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get updates whenever I post a new one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.